Hey, A-Pushers, welcome to episode three of my How to Write series. We're gonna go through short answer questions three and four. If you don't know me, I'm Annie Jensen, and I have graded AP exams for six years, and I have graded thousands of responses, and so I'm gonna be including my best tips here for how to make sure you're getting the points on the actual day of the AP exam. For this series, we're going to be using the questions from 2023 set one. So my best strategy for you is to pull up those questions to go to a push FRQ, click on the link, and then you're going to um, click uh, 2023 set one, so when I introduce the question, then go do the question and then come back and hear how I would go about it and compare what you did. So for questions three and four, you're going to get a choice. You are only going to need to answer one of them. And if you answer both, they're not going to like figure out which one you did better on. You're only, you have to select which one you're answering and then you'll just have that one graded. So both of them are going to be from different time periods, but address the same skills. So in the past, the college board has usually used the skills of comparison or continuity and change over time for three and four. And then question three is going to be from periods one through five and question six will come from the content from periods six through nine. So the questions from 2023 address the skill of similarities and differences, comparison. So what you're going to do here what you're going to notice is that in the past there's always a question where you identify a similarity between two things and you identify a difference between two things and then the third question the third prompt is kind of a wild card sometimes it's more of a causation prompt or um, uh, it's, it's usually going to be something that's either incorporating contextualization or a cause and effect so in 2023, the questions were actually extremely similar. Both were dealing with the idea of agriculture and its influence on two regions. And so in question number three, it's in the period of 1607 to 1776. So mostly period two, but bleeding a little bit into three there. And then for question four, it is about 1865 to 1900. And so really periods, you know, five and six there. So when you get to questions three and four, you don't want to waste a lot of time choosing which question to answer. Just read them both, figure out, do a little brainstorm. What specific evidence do I have? And then just go for it. Don't twiddle your thumbs and think, oh, maybe I could do this one better. No, just pick one that you have evidence for and write it. So then you're going to, when you get to these similarities and differences, I encourage a three sentence approach. One sentence, that's a topic sentence, and then one sentence for each region. So if we're looking at Question number three, this is going to be the colonies primarily. And so what we're going to talk about here is that in the Chesapeake and the Southern colonies, both used a cash crop economy primarily. In the Southern colonies, they grew a lot of rice. In the Chesapeake colonies, they grew a lot of um, tobacco. And this led to a high demand for enslaved labor. So there you're providing an example of each, but then connecting it to the similarity that they both demanded enslaved labor. Now, similar for differences, I want you to provide a broad overview state statement and then a, an example for each region. So in the regions, there was a difference in who arrived and who settled in each region. In New England, there were more families that lived there. And in the South, there were more single men. This was because of the plantation agriculture that was developing in the South. It led to more single men coming, whereas the um, subsistence agriculture didn't create this export economy based on plantations that would have fueled a, a specific type of settler. These questions were all about comparison, but you can apply the same thing for continuity and change over time. If it's asking for continuities, broad overview, and then give a, uh, something that is staying the same. And then for the um, change over time, you're going to give a broad overview and then an example of the change that happens. So I hope that this helps you better understand how to address um, questions three and four. The big thing that I would say is make sure to explain. Some students just like to name drop or just list the evidence, but questions the AP readers are always asking is, did they do enough? Don't make them ask that question, just do enough. Just explain the evidence and make sure it connects to the prompt so that the reader can easily say, yes, they did and give you the points. At this point, you should go check your responses against the rubric and the samples that are listed. So go to um, APUSH, FRQ, 2023, set one, uh, essay Q3 or Q4, and then read the rubric and compare what you did. And then finally, stay tuned. Our next episode of the series is going to address some of the essay skills for both DBQs and LEQs.